Cutting edge. <laughs> like Prabhupada. Okay. Thank you. Who's the author of this? Lakshman did this? Lakshman? Lakshman did that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> he does all the takes here. He's amazing. That's a mini cake. Transcendental things. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, now I just start. <clears throat> so I just eat a little bit. Or eat a lot. And then I want to start. Do you want to do it? Okay. Here we go. I'll get them for you. Well, let's be, well, let me give this to the kids. Is that okay? Are you? Are you guys ready? So he's got some ideas. Oh. Oh. Are you? Kids first. Kids first. You want cake? Come, come, come. Make a line. Make a line. Kids first. Children first. Children first. Thank you, everybody. Children first. Yeah, I'm I see. He's not much of a king. 
Somebody else wanted to cut the cake. I just want to not work so hard today. Okay. Pull it off to the side for Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. As we will be cutting the cake and our other God brothers distributing, our senior God brother is going to talk a few words about how your association with Bhakti Maharaj and your start and we're going to. Okay, and how you started this movement and how you let him take a few words. Humble request. Come on, ask the mic. Humble request. We will use. Yes. Okay, whatever you all did, you all read it. First, starting with you. Go ahead. Okay, you face the side. I'll stick around. Are you kidding me? Quite fitting. 
the poem is entitled, appropriately, Walking. <laughs> to walk abroad is not with eyes, but thoughts the fields to see and prize. Else may the silent feet, like logs of wood, move up and down and see no good, nor joy nor glory meet. Even carts and wheels their place do change, but cannot see, though very strange, the glory that is by. Dead puppets may move in the bright and glorious day, yet not behold the sky. And are not men, then they more blind, who having eyes yet never find, the bliss in which they move, like statues dead, they up and down are carried, yet never see nor love. To walk is by a thought to go, to move in spirit to and fro, to mind the good we see, to taste the sweet, observing all the things we meet, how choice and rich they be. To note the beauty of the day, and golden fields of corn survey, admire each pretty flower with its sweet smell, to praise their maker, and to tell the marks of his great power. To fly abroad like active bees among the hedges and the trees, to cull the dew that lies on every blade, from every blossom till we laid our minds as they their thighs. Observe those rich and glorious things, the rivers, meadows, woods, and springs, the fructifying sun, to note from far the rising of each twinkling star for us his race to run. A little child these well perceives, who tumbling in green grass and leaves, may rich as kings be thought, but there's a sight which perfect manhood may delight, to which we shall be brought. Well, in those pleasant paths we talk, tis that towards which at last we walk. For we may by degrees wisely proceed, pleasures of love and praise to heed, for viewing herbs and trees.
uh, Dropada, Dropada's father came, Vyasadev was there, several other Brahmins were there, and they were discussing the pros and cons. Can, is this actually authentic? Can a, a, a one woman have five husbands? Is, is it appropriate? And I think there were some um, historical uh, things that were mentioned that in the ancient histories that there are rare instances where this was going on. Uh, and so the, the arguments were going back and forth. And then finally Yudhisthira spoke. And he said, you know, I don't know about the Shastra, but I feel in my heart that it's right. And that was Yudhisthira's only argument, that within his heart, he felt that this union was the right and proper thing. And so Maharaj, he always points to the heart to help us connect with Krishna through the heart. And uh, he makes it a very joyous and wonderful process, this Krishna consciousness. So anyone who has Maharaj as his guru is very fortunate. And anyone who knows Maharaj is also supremely fortunate. Thank you so much. For that. My husband and I had the good fortune of traveling with Maharaj on the youth bus tour. So if those of you who've been around teenagers, it takes something, but Maharaj fit right in with them and it was no problem, and he slept right there on the bus, like this on his back, and he had no possessions, no blanket, no pillow, just slept there, very austere. But it was a lot of fun, and he, um, we all know that he wrote dramas and engaged all these youth, like we were hearing this morning about Kunti, and he did the whole drama of Radeya, that whole play, very incredible. So that was really nice traveling on the youth bus tour. They used to be quite long, like nine weeks long. And Maharaj, um, you know how a lot of um, high profile devotees and gurus, they're very difficult to approach, kind of. You know, you get really nervous and like, um, you know, you think I could never talk to them. But Maharaj was so approachable and friendly, anyone can <laughs> speak to him, you know what I mean? And he spoke in his class this morning about being friendly and how friendly is, that's the access to people's heart, because we may have very high philosophy, which is the absolute truth, but if we're um, proud and arrogant, people can't accept it. So through that love, that's Maharaj's most redeeming quality that he's loving, and people feel that. They feel that he actually loves you, and um, and therefore your heart opens to listen to him. Yes. So while we were in the Toronto temple, Maharaj is forever cleaning, and and um, and he doesn't explode like um, it, it would be understandable every day during Japa. Like here we have these beautiful shoe racks, but who uses them? See, there you go. Um, but there in Toronto, we have beautiful shoe racks, so every morning he goes out in the hallway, picks up the shoes, puts them on the rack, and everything else that's out of order. He's always doing it and reminding us. And then um, he's just so lighthearted, and we used to go with him on his walks. We walked with the youth through all kinds of mountains in the snow, and. And even though it was the summer, the high mountains had snow. And then he taught my husband about the wild herbs. Now, my husband is obsessed with food. He, um, he's, you know, he just is in the kitchen every waking moment besides sadhana. He just comes home at 10 o'clock at night, 
So he just loves everything about food. So Marge taught him, especially lamb's quarters. So everywhere we go, there's lamb's quarters. And he just picks it right out of the ground, and then he cooks it and when he gets home. It's like spinach. But he taught him other edible herbs as well. So I feel honored to um, know you, Maharaj, and that you allowed me to be on the bus tour with you and in Toronto. Thank you. Thank you so much, our brothers and sisters, Sudhavida Dasi, Rajasriya Dasa, Michelle, and Shreya, everybody, our Sunday wishes and our brothers and sisters to you. A few words from Nithaita. Hare Krishna Maharaj, so happy to see you again. Oh, I'm happy to see you. When's well, your birthday? I'm <laughs> I have to be there. No. I'm obliged. I was reading the other day uh, that, uh, and I didn't know this when I was in the uh, in the movement earlier, but it was some remembrance I was reading. Maybe it was uh, one of the biographies of Prabhupada. But that in the '70s there was uh, there was a lot of sannyasis uh, that had been made and they took to devotional service with such intensity. They were incredible kirtan leaders. They spoke Shastra so nicely. They did sankirtan. They raised money. They opened temples. And they were so energetic that it was like, it was, it was, it was scary. It was so, they were so energetic, it was scary. And they, they, they traveled all over and, then, and when they left kirtan, it was just like an explosion of energy. Um, and but the thing about the morals was they, they kind of had this attitude that everyone should be as intense as them, you know, and uh, it was impossible to keep up with them. And through the course of their preaching and their attitude, they developed a nickname for themselves, and they actually liked it. They were called the Mean Swamis. <laughs> the Mean Swamis. <laughs> And they were known all over the movement. I mean, I never knew them as that. <laughs> but supposedly, when they travel a lot, they didn't come as much. Um, but what we have in Maharaj is, is, is the opposite. He's, he's not the mean swami, he's the nice swami. <laughs> uh, you know, he's so, uh, he's so sweet. And he's, he knows how to do everything. You know, it's not like, He's lacking anything that these other swamis had, but he does it in such a, a sweet and, and and gentle way that it it, it, it an inclusive way. You know, it's, it's a, my best association with Maharaj is always right in the center of the kirtan, where he's encouraging us to dance and chant loudly and, and involve everyone. So I always try to make him a point when Maharaj is leading kirtan. Or when he's not leading kirtan, he expresses the same enthusiasm when someone else is leading. He likes to dance, to sing, raise his arm, and uh, and this and this approach, this approach of the Krishna consciousness, the joyfulness that he has in whether he's preaching or uh, giving books or raising funds or dealing with the youth. I especially I really appreciate Maharaj, Your attitude of service doesn't turn off. When there's a festival, a lot of us when there's a festival, we turn on our we turn on our enjoying spirit. <laughs> ah, it's a festival. We enjoy the kirtan. We enjoy. It. But Mars at these festivals in Mount recently when we went to Mayapur, Mars was the whole time he was like, like, like he was in, 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 in he was uh, practicing the drama to serve the devotees for the festival. He didn't just come in and see somebody else do drama, but he came to serve the devotees. So this attitude. A non-stop service attitude in a blissful, joyful, humble way that is inclusive. It is is the kind of leadership that uh, is kind of needs to uh, take over the world. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I love you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Too much nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the nice one. I'm the good one. Now, my god brother, because I was going to say the same one.
that just reminded me when I was in Toronto, uh, Maharaj allowed me to be in the Ramayan, and I got to be Serpanika. But the main thing was, Maharaj taught every actor how to act their roles. So he would get up on the stage during rehearsal and show us how to do it. My favorite was Gentle Sita. He showed how to be Mother Sita. <laughs> so uh, my story is not as eloquent as everybody else. I have a little bit of writer's block this week. But I do have a funny story. Like when you're supposed to meet your spiritual master, it's supposed to be a, a big deal in your life. The first time I ever met you, you, uh, you were at Dalma Ties, and I showed up, and you were gone. And they're like, hey, we don't know where he's at. Can you go find him? So I had to go walk around all around his neighborhood to find him, and I never found him. So that was our first meeting. <laughs> Some random monk walking around the streets of Fairview Park lives. And that whole day, I didn't, like, I missed class and everything, because I didn't know you ended up, you found your way back, but I didn't, so. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Everybody else has these magical stories. <laughs> and mine's like, well, I, I couldn't find it. So, you know, and that was it. So. But now, you know, you let me walk with you, so now I always know where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I always say, like, if this is your disciple, you have to be a pretty nice guy and a very tolerant guy. <laughs> so, as I always say in our emails and stuff, thanks for putting up with me. Oh, <laughs> Mother Purnamasi would like to say Purnima. Um, yeah, Mother Purnima. Uh, my husband and I moved to live north of Toronto for th about three hours north of Toronto before we moved here in '82. Mm -hmm. So we used to go to the Toronto Temple off and on. Uh, of course, Murdy was associating with all the devotees for years before. We were initiated here. Um, first time I saw Maharaj was we were in the Toronto Temple, and it was probably in the early days of your drama, your directing. Um, you were doing a play, and remember that little room? It was all wood paneled. It was like a den or something, very small. Your humble beginnings, and now, of course, your dramas are extraordinary. And then Maharaj, back in the day, um, the devotees used to, maybe the younger ones don't know, used to travel around, maybe they're still doing it, I don't know, travel around and uh, distribute or sell paintings. Uh, one devotee called them dried up little paintings. Remember, and he used to come to Huntsville, do you remember that? And he used to come with the Brahmacharya, which, so whenever he was in our area, it was Huntsville. We lived about 15 miles away, down like three roads at the end of a gravel road. And we didn't have GPS in those days, so I don't know how you even found us. Uh, we lived in a little cabin on a lake, very idyllic, no one was around, it was great. We just thought it was Nirvana, right? But um, I can remember you'd show up when we didn't expect it, and you'd you know, <laughs> interrupt us in the middle of our Maya and all this stuff, and uh, it was great though, you know, you'd cook a feast, we'd have a morning program, we'd have a uh, program at night, and, uh, I remember sitting there one day, or one night, or whatever, and we were looking out, and it was just beautiful. It was a beautiful lake, trees, you know, we're really into nature and all that, getting away from everybody and everything. And, and I remember you saying to us, don't you find it dry? And, you know, Ruti and I, of course, it was Michael at the time, just looked at the, each other and thought, oh my God, what's he talking about, you know? And of course, it's taken me about 35 years, Maharaj, and now, yeah, out there is dry, you know, if we, you know, if we don't have Krishna. Now I know what you meant. <laughs> it was so funny it took all these years. But um, like Sankirtan said, um, it's like you've always been there, you know. I mean, it's not like I see you a lot, you, you know, when you used to come for inspiration and everything. And occasionally when I go back to the Toronto Temple, you'd be there. But it was like you're like you're a rock. You're just always there. You're steady and so approachable. And um, it's just, you know, hopefully I can call you a friend. It's just nice that you're always here for for all of us. Thank you very much. Hi, Christian Mars. I saw Mars many times in the past. You know, first time I got to connect with him when I was traveling to South Africa in 2008. I believe I was with him on the drive to Mars. So he flew to um, South Africa from UK, 
So, uh, so I was walking to the temple. I, I remember you walking down that stairs, the Durban Temple, and and I saw you just gone. You know, I went to the temple. I came out to the front outside of the temple. You, someone is from behind, patting my shoulder. Who was that? You know, then I looked. Oh, that's Bhakti Maharaj. <laughs> I never got to meet you in person, like talk to you, but you have been very kind and very. I felt that affection from you, like fatherly affection for a lost son. So, um, living family, joining the temple for a while, not going back to family. So, I feel like kind of missing that fatherly affection bit. Um, so, I really found that connection in 2009 during, or 2008 during uh, Rathia Festival in Durban. So, after that, I really felt that that moment made me feel like, huh, there is someone who cares about me. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we do not, we say Hare Krishna movement is a personal movement. We tend to forget that we're personal. We forget to be personal with each other. We have the highest philosophy, but when it comes to practice, just being normal, I think sometimes it fail to be. So, um, it's unfortunate too, but you exemplified how to be personal and, and how to be caring and loving. And I learned and developed such appreciation for you over the years, doing different projects together, particularly the Festival of Inspiration for six years, then, then the 50th anniversary in Butler, Pennsylvania. I mean, you were... You were the biggest inspiration, actually, for that event. I was quite reluctant to be part of it, but from the beginning to end, you really encouraged us to organize that event. It was a big, it was a, for lack of a better term, now get big American heck of endeavor so to pull that festival. So it really, how you encouraged us and put brought us together to that event, that historical event. I'm ever grateful to you for that, and your. Suddenly, an email from you that also inspires, and I really thank you and ask your blessings on this auspicious occasion of your Gyasa Puja. May you continue to show your mercy to the all, all of us, not only all of us. <laughs> and we are just so fortunate to have your association, to have a Shiksha Guru, Diksha Guru, friend. Uh, spiritual father like you so i just want to say thank you so much for being who you are and encouraging us to your examples your loving affection so thank you very much on behalf of bhakti vedanta medical group dr prasanna cheta is going to talk so I met Maharaj in Omaha, Nebraska. I went to interview to get a job there. And he is walking cross country. And I just went for a weekend and he, used to, he was there. And still I remember how, uh, you know, we conducted a, a program in Hindu temple. And uh, he teach uh, the dance steps and how to, you know, uh, how to do the kirtan to all the first comers. And still today, it's one of the most memorable kirtans to me. And after that, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have been working on this Bhakti Vedanta medical retreat. We organized this retreat for the doctors and we did uh, two retreats in the same hall. Uh, one this year and one last year. So, I mean, uh, as all of you mentioned, Maharaj, I think, you know, the most important things I like, as uh, you know, you mentioned in the class, is simple and being friendly and, uh, and uh, you know, approachable. Uh, the other day, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, it's very, very rare to see these simple qualities uh, you know, anywhere. So I really, really appreciate uh, you are gu guiding Bhakti Vedanta Medical Retreat. The other point I want to highlight is, you know, uh, when we started this doctor's retreat, there is cardiologist and all these people, but we don't have direction. And once Maharaj retreat, uh, the retreat is going so nicely and so productive. So I was really uh, uh, inspired and uh, surprised also 
the knowledge he has uh, in various topics it's not only spirituality but about uh, we had went a walk uh, during this walk this morning he was asking how walking is helpful for brain and we discussed uh, about uh, this topics uh, so thank you so much for all the guidance and uh, you know i feel just like brahman prabhu mentioned uh, like a spiritual father and guide and also like a good friend yeah. so, hare krishna thank you all for joining us for this happy occasion it's already 1:30 and prashad has been served the next session is start going to start at 2 o'clock so Yeah, just say. Sure. So I wasn't prepared to speak. Um, Maharaj, thank you for tolerating me. Uh, I've been very fortunate to have a lot of your association for the last maybe twenty years, and uh, I hope it continues. <laughs> and. Uh, I just like to highlight that Maharaj has many, many wonderful qualities. Uh, one quality is that he's very unassuming. Um, though he has a lot of leadership and responsibilities in his time, he's still happy to go out on Hari Nam with just one or two devotees. And I remember when I came to Toronto to join the Brahmachari Ashram. Um, Maharaj personally came to the airport to receive me and um, bring me back to the temple. So I think that this unassuming, very personal uh, quality that you have is very endearing. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. So let's all join, okay, to the Prashant table, so that we can start the next Wait. session at two o'clock. If one other, Baha Lakshmi. Yeah.
what they're bringing to their lives, like who, you know, like who, how you're affecting them. And it was just a really positive impact, and I appreciated it very much. So thank you for coming to Walter.